Okay. So, welcome back. I assume people are starting to come back from the break. I see a couple of people still marked as away, so I expect they'll probably be joining us in a moment. I um, I'm, I think we have a lot of great questions to get to, but I actually would like to uh, I'd like to start off by with a few general comments here. Uh, I'm going to pull up our uh, week five page here, and I want to I want to pull down to the homework section and point out what we've got. I've, we have several things listed for extra credit this week, and I want to just uh, just quickly run through these. Uh, and and actually, in particular, I would like to talk about the the let's see the where is it? Well, maybe it wasn't. I, oh, okay, it's actually in the regular homework here. We have. Um, write a blog post. So I want to just uh, make a few comments about the context of this course. Uh, as some of you know, uh, this this course came about as a part of a grant that Sarah and Bob and I uh, are working on. This has been a uh, close to a two-year project for us. And the purpose of this is to improve articles related to open educational resources and to encourage people involved in that field to uh, to, to do that improvement. So um, many of you have come to us through an interest in open educational resources, and that's how you found out about the course. Uh, others didn't know anything about OER when you started and have been learning as you go along. Uh, but either way, uh, it's, it's especially helpful to us uh, if, you can, uh, if you can basically talk to your, the people in your network uh, about the what you've been learning about Wikipedia. So if you feel that you've learned something useful in this course uh, that sort of helped you understand Wikipedia a little bit better or understand the opportunities to improve educational content, um, we, it would be fantastic if you could write a blog post or post some comments on YouTube or, uh, or just brief comments in Facebook or Twitter. Uh, and and talk about that a little bit so that whoever you're connected with in your world uh, can also get some benefit out of this course and learn a little bit of something about Wikipedia. Um, I think it's also useful to you. Uh, I think uh, all of you have, have really demonstrated, uh, you know, vastly expanding understanding of, of what's going on with Wikipedia, and it can often be really um, really satisfying to try to collect some of those thoughts, even in a very brief blog post or video or something, if you, you know, just a, a paragraph or two, uh, and just talk about what you've learned and see who in your network might find that interesting and might have something to say about it. So I'd, I'd really like to strongly encourage you to do that particular assignment. It's not required for the badge, but it is something that, uh, that has lots of benefits. Uh, if you want to do that and want some feedback first, if you want to run a draft by us or something, uh, that's fine too. Feel free to just uh, send me an email or something like that. Uh, or if you don't have, maybe you don't have a blog, but you'd like to do a blog post, um, feel free to reach out to me individually too. Uh, I'd be happy to let, uh, to, to put a guest post on my own blog or help you find a, a blog to publish it on as well. Um, there are a few other things as well in the extra credit section. Um, some of you have really uh, been been going, uh, have, have gotten a lot done on your articles already. And so you might be interested to do something like submit your article for a good article review. Or if it's not really at that level yet, maybe just to do a more general peer review where you reach out to other Wikipedians and, and request their input on the improvements that you've done to your article. So, uh, this first one here gives you links to all three of those. I don't think there's anything that would be ready for featured article, which, as we've said before, is a pretty high standard. But good article, if you, especially if you started off with an article that was at like B class or C class uh, and have done some work on it, it might really be ready for good article at this point. Uh, or you know, even if you started one from scratch, I know that uh, there is. I, I, I can think of at least one article. Uh, that at least based on a, a quick reading to me was a brand new article in this course uh, that a couple of students have worked on 
that certainly looks like a good candidate for good article. I won't, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I've reviewed it closely enough to know for sure that it's there, but I think it would be useful to uh, to propose it there. Um, another thing you might be interested to do is participate in a decision on Wikipedia. So one of those might be to look at the, the list of current candidates for featured article and offer your comments on whether you think it's uh, it's worthwhile or whether you think there is improvement that needs to happen to the article before it would get to that point. Um, there are, I'm actually going to come back after class and put a few specific links in this section, participate in a decision. So I'll, uh, there are all kinds of decisions being made on Wikipedia all the time that require deliberation. Uh, like people are being uh, voted on of whether they should become administrators on Wikipedia. Uh, there are requests for comment where there's an argument on an arg article and people want more perspectives on how it should be resolved. Um, there are proposed changes to policies. So as you've gotten more familiar with how Wikipedia works, you're every bit as qualified to comment on those things as anyone else. And I would love to see, uh, see you participating in those decisions and also reporting back on our class discussion page on how that, on how that goes. Um, and then this, of course, can be something that happens on, offline, too. This could be through a blog post or Facebook or Twitter, or it could just be an in-person conversation. But, um, you know, if there's something that you've brought up for discussion on a Wikipedia talk page, you also might have a, a, a colleague that has an, uh, an opinion on that, too. So just having some offline discussion and reporting back about that um, could be helpful as well. So, um, Anyway, I don't want to take up all the time. I, uh, I know we've had lots of questions on the Etherpad, so I want to get to those uh, pretty quickly. So I'm going to just click into the Etherpad page. Um, it does seem to me that the, the question of, uh, I know that, uh, that several people have had questions around uh, how to get started on their final project or uh, you know, how to kind of move forward. So I want to, I want to address those uh, questions first. Um, I think, uh, let's see, I'm just looking back in the... Pete, there was actually a, uh, a technical yeah. question posed about the badges, which I think maybe we should address early on. And it's whether okay. the 200 edits can be spread across all Wikimedia and Wikipedia sites in all languages, or you need to be able to count them all in one language, e.g. English language. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question, and I, I think that's not something that... Uh, that Yes, if it's if it's across multiple Wikipedia sites and Wikimedia sites, uh, that would certainly count towards the 200. Um, it's actually not something that I had really considered, uh, but there's but there's there's no reason that that wouldn't qualify. So if you when you get to the point of applying for the badge, uh, just put in the multiple links. So if you have an account on English Wikipedia and Spanish Wikipedia and also Wikimedia Commons and those add up to 200 edits, then just put in all of those links and, uh, and I'll just review all of them. And, and I think it's especially, I actually think it's really cool that we've had so many people who are branching out to multiple sites. When we originally designed this course, we really only had English Wikipedia in mind uh, and we didn't really expect people to be branching off too much. into commons and Wikidata and sites like that. Um, but it's, I, I think, a real testament to the variety of uh, interesting ideas that our students bring to the course. So I'm, I'm very happy to see that. Uh, anything else you, you think I need to get to right away, Sarah? Or should I just jump into the, um, the questions around uh, quality? Yeah, the ones I summarized and, uh, earlier, I, I think, are um, the ones with most plus ones next to them. Okay, so I think the, the first thing you passed along to me is uh, how do I know when a stub is ready for an upgrade and how do I, how do I get it upgraded? So I, I, I think this means uh, getting it uh, assessed at a higher level. And um, let, me, let me just, I'm going to take a look at this example I happen to have up on my screen. I don't remember how this is assessed. Okay, so this one is at C class. But let's, let's just assume... Uh, for the sake of looking at something, unless someone wants to bring up a specific example, I'm happy to look at something someone's been working on. Uh, but I'm going to just get started with this, and we can look at another example if, if someone pastes something in. 
Um, so here's an article that, uh, if, as we look at it, um, it has several different sections. It has a, a um, it has some detail in the in the lead section. It gives birth date and death date, and it has a reference. Uh, we have uh, one one section that covers her life overall with a number of references in it. We have a complete info box. So um, if you were to look at this and think uh, this is a C-class article based on your understanding of the C-class criteria, but then you get down to the article and you saw a tag that said this is a stub, which we don't in this case, but if you did, um, there are a few different ways you could proceed. If you've been If you've been the main person to work on this article, it's probably best to have someone else make that determination. Um, specifically going from stub to start class, I would say it's fine for you to do that yourself. If it's, if it's a very clear case, if you have, you know, I'd say more than four or five references and a few paragraphs, um, I would say that's very clearly beyond stub class. So I think going from stub to start class is something you can do for yourself. So to remove the tag, um, let's, does someone have an example of a stub? I'd like to pull up a, a real example so that I can, okay, I'm looking in the chat window, Tori Merton. Okay, very good. So, so this has two stub tags at the bottom. So, um, this biographical article relating to American rowing is a stub and they're categorized. So this biography of an American academic administrator is a stub. So uh, I'm going to just do this myself. I'm uh, like, without even reading the article, uh, I am very confident that this is more than a stub. Uh, I see that it's got a lead section, several other sections, everything I just described. It's got multiple references. The references are well formatted. Of course, it's possible that these references could be, uh, you know, without me reading them, I don't really know whether they're all good ones, but I do know from my experience with Wikipedia that it's very rare that something would be so uh, well developed and and more than a few of the references are questionable. So in this case, I'm very happy to just change it from stub. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the, the bottom section. So the bottom section here happens to be external links. So I'll click edit here. And you see, uh, you, I, so you, this is the external link that was listed and then you see a bunch of stuff that doesn't show up uh, normally in the page, these are the categories. Um, so they they, sh they show up uh, they show up at the bottom of the page, but then at the very bottom you see these two lines. These are what are adding what's adding those stub lines at the bottom of the article. So I'm going to just delete those two, and I'm going to put in an edit summary that says not a stub, or I could say it's I could say remove stub tags doesn't matter a whole lot as long as you're generally describing what you do. And I'll click save page. <laughs> Congratulations, Randolph. <laughs> and uh, and now I'm going to go to the, so there, so stubs are noted on the page itself, but for the most part, assessments are on the talk page. So I'm also going to go to the talk page. And this top section here, you see that it's rated stub class in three different wiki projects, wiki project growing, wiki project uh, biography, sports and games, etc. And so I'm going to click the edit button at the top and look for those wiki project tags, wiki project biography. So we have class equals stub and also in wiki project United States we have class equals stub and then a third time wiki project growing class equals stub. So I'm going to change these to start I think probably this is beyond start class. If I were to really sit back and read it, um, I would probably put this at C class or B class, but um, I'm not willing to make that assessment without actually putting some, some effort into it. So for now, I'm just gonna change it to start on each one of these three. And I'll scroll down to the bottom, Let's say from stub class. So uh, you, you do need to know specifically the name of the class. So there's stub, start, B, C, 
uh, and you won't be doing the good article or featured article because those are those those are the result of a more formal assessment. So you do have to put it in the like if we said like if we remembered it wrong and we put in like beginning class or something like that, that wouldn't work. So if you forget this, you might want to look at another article and uh, make sure that you're really typing in the right thing. Anyway, here I I'll click on save page. Or you might want to do show preview if it's the first time you're editing one of these and you're not quite sure if you got it right. Thank you. Yes, that would be the way if you weren't sure if you remembered the the right uh, term. So now we, we see I did get it right. It's rated start class. And if I actually show that, you'll see it down here. This orange badge uh, shows that it's been rated as start class for this wiki project. So. Let's say that you uh, that you are looking for an assessment that's higher than start class. So let's say Randolph, uh, here's what I say that this is probably beyond uh, start class, and would like someone to weigh in on that. You would want to go to one of these wiki projects. You could go to multiple wiki projects, but I would suggest just looking for one that's accurate, that's active. Um, and then you would, if you click show, you'll see this some information about the project. So I would start off by going to the wiki project page itself and then click on its talk page in the upper left. So this is the talk page for the wiki project itself. And then add a new section. And then you'd want to give it a headline that's probably the title of the article, uh, which I've already, it's Tori, I'm already forgetting what it is and it's scrolled off my screen. Um, but you would type that in the subject line and then just uh, say I've been working on this article. You would want to put a link to it, so you'd want to put double brackets. Uh, or if you're if you prefer the visual way, you could click on link, and that will let you type in the uh, uh, the the name of the article. That will insert the link, and uh, and then. Save, save that, put assign it, and save the page. And hopefully, someone on that wiki project will then see this and come along and uh, and give it a new assessment. Uh, as we've as we've seen. Wiki projects aren't always all that active, so sometimes nobody's going to see that for a few months. So there's really no guarantee. Um, if if people want to uh, assess one another's articles in this class. Uh, I think that's fine to do, but uh, but do be aware that um, there's always concern around this of uh, what's called a quid pro quo. So if you if you know Latin, uh, that's you know uh, I, I I shouldn't bring up Latin because I don't know the exact <laughs> meaning of the phrase, uh, but um, there 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 could be concern if someone else sees this that um, that people are sort of inappropriately. Uh, assessing something higher than it should be as a favor to one another. So um, it's at the lower levels of assessment, that's not a problem at all. But um, if you find yourself tempted to uh, say that something's like B class or like one of the higher levels, uh, just because you like someone in class, uh, you should really think about that and whether you're whether you should be the one to assess it and you might want to uh, to leave that to a wiki project and someone who hasn't been involved. It's always a judgment call, but I think if if it's at the start class and C class level, it's not it's not going to be a problem. No one's going to object to it. Just be diligent about what you're doing and make sure that you really you know read it through and think it through. So how's that? Should we move on to another question or anything else on that topic before? Peter, I'm going to throw out one a question that has come up in other classes after this exchange. Which probably won't come up here. It's when we've talked a lot about wiki projects. People people are getting to the point in their final project where they want an article, you know, moved from one class to another. And there is no wiki project paying attention to the article. Then to whom do you turn for reclassification of an article? Well I think that would be a good um that would be a good thing to bring up on our class talk page. Um, because there probably is a wiki project out there somewhere that would be interested, and I am certainly happy to help find one and add it to an article. I think there are other uh, students in the class and people watching Wiki Project Open who might help out with that as well. 
Um, so yeah, I think if that's the case, just bring it up on our class discussion page. Um, and and let me just, I, I think I, I try to point this out every time. Uh, if anyone has not been following our, our class talk page, uh, there's lots going on there. And it's well worth uh, checking in and reading up on recent topics. It's actually getting quite long at this point. Um, we've had so many discussions, so you might want to scroll down to the very bottom and kind of read backwards and, uh, and get a sense of what people have been talking about. But uh, those who have been leaving comments, I think, have, have found uh, a lot of common questions and in some cases are able to answer each other's questions. So please uh, do not overlook that resource. Uh, also, uh, there's one thing I want to mention about this. Uh, we've had several, uh, I think, more advanced students, uh, returning students and people who have really been putting a lot of time into, the, into their projects who have come up with um, who have come up with uh, critiques of how Wikipedia works and suggestions of how things could work better. And I have been, I've been thinking about that. I think that as we finish this, this course, uh, it would be really cool if we could put together um, a summary of those ideas. Uh, I think, you know, they, they're kind of beyond the main purpose of this course. Uh, because you know, the, the purpose of the course is to help you work with Wikipedia as it exists. And I would say this is sort of more of an intermediate topic, which is like, how can we improve the structure of Wikipedia? But it's great that people are thinking in that direction. And I think if we can, um, if we can record those suggestions somewhere, uh, I'd like to do that. I don't yet have that really sorted out into a really specific proposal, but I have not forgotten these excellent suggestions and will be uh, following up with you all before the course, those of you who have who've had them. So, Sarah, uh, do we have a, another topic for me to move on to? Well, during, right after the break, a whole bunch of plus ones added next to number eight. What happens if we're behind? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, there were uh, the other topics that were coming up in, in a recurring manner before that had to do with references. What are good references? Um, what's right. the difference between the difference between footnotes and references? And do you need all those sections? Right. But if people are urgently feeling like they're behind, that's also something to. Address. Yeah. Um, I believe we, I'm just searching through the, okay, so we actually had the references question on the course talk page. Uh, and I put in a, a, a rather extensive answer to that here. It's, I'm, I'm sure people, you know, may very well have more detailed questions that this doesn't cover, but if you haven't seen this and you're cur curious about references, uh, I'm going to just refer you to this. Uh, to this section, and feel free to to just follow up in this discussion uh, if this doesn't cover what you need to know. I think the, the 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 short version of it is that there are multiple different formats. Um, it's not there's not a strict rule about how reference sections and similar sections should be formatted, and different people do have different styles. Um, if you're if you're working on an article that has kind of a confusing approach to it, you might want to look uh, in the featured articles list um, and find a similar article that has been through the featured article process and you might find a, a better structure. And then you could go to the articles talk page and propose that you make it more like that featured article. It can be a little bit technical to, to do all of those changes, so before you do it, you might want to really think about whether it's something you want to dive into. Some, some people are more interested in fiddling with the technical details than others. Um, so you might want to not want to jump into that project unless you're one of those people. <laughs> uh, do feel free also to bring up, a, if there's a specific article, like, like in this question, uh, Eternal Learner asked us specifically about the MOOC page. Uh, and uh, it's been a little while since I answered the question. I might go back and uh, see how she's done with that and uh, offer more specific suggestions if, uh, if that hasn't gotten anywhere yet. Uh, I think the, the, the other question, Sarah, just 
drew my attention to is what to do if I'm behind. Um, and I'm trying to think what's the best general way to get at that. Um, the so I think the, the the point that we're hoping that you're at, and that I know that that uh, a number of our students are right now, is that you've chosen uh, a, an article for your final project. Um, if you have not yet recorded your choice, the place to do that is on our course homepage, uh, where if you scroll to the bottom, you should find your username in in the list uh, from when you registered for the course, and uh, I think my demo account right now is not registered, so I'm not seeing it. But if you, oh yes, of, of course it, it is. Um, I'm in the wrong place. So next to your name, you should see this field where you can add an article, and you just type in the name. So if I wanted to work with gating along uh, with, epistemia of, with epistemology of Wikipedia, I would just type that right in here. Oops, I just copied and pasted it. Didn't work. <laughs> so. You type it in. It's important that it's the exact title. It'll it'll come up and pre-populate. If uh, if you don't see that, you might have done a misspelling or something. And just click Add Article, and then it will show up in this list. Um, once you've chosen your your final project, uh, you want to get to work on it. So um, I think everyone has has been doing a little bit of editing, but you might not have really uh, gotten deeply involved in an article yet. So you would want to go to that article and think about what can be done to improve it. So just at first glance on this article, you know, I see some pros and a lot of lists. So perhaps it would be useful to, um, to give more pros context for these lists. I don't know. I haven't looked at this article recently. So uh, I see three references that look, they're nicely formatted and they at least at first glance, look high quality. They're, they look like uh, journal articles, so that's good. But you might you might find additional reference materials. Uh, you might you might go to a library. You might do some searching online. Um, and if you're unsure of of how these should be added to the article, then you might want to start with the talk page. You might go to the talk page and say uh, add a new section and say I've just found this new article that covers this thing. Uh, that isn't yet in the Wikipedia article, what do other people think? And then you might come back a couple days later and see if anyone has responded. Um, that's really, that's not required. Uh, and in if you do have a specific idea of how things should be improved, in most cases, unless you're working on a really, really popular controversial article, like the one about the airplane that just went missing or something like that, um, it, there's really no need to go to the talk page first. Just fix it on the on the article. If if you do think it's something that other people might have different opinions about, then it's a good idea to also leave a note on the talk page and say, hey, I did this. Uh, I think it's a good idea, but I'd be interested in feedback from other people. Okay, so ah, okay, so Maynard has a, an excellent related question here. Uh, Maynard says in the chat window, I'm working on a biography where the subject, who's recently deceased, is listed throughout Wikipedia on many Wikipedia pages. Do I need or want to link any or all of these? So um, I, I think there are two questions. I'm not sure which one of these two questions you're asking, but I think they're both worth considering. Uh, actually, this, it's kind of similar to this particular article we happen to be looking at says this article is an orphan. Uh, so uh, it's it's always worthwhile if you're working on an article. It's always worthwhile to click on what links here in the tools menu, just to see what other Wikipedia articles are listing or linking to this topic. And in this case, I see I see a number of pages, but these notice that there are user pages, user talk pages. I don't think any of them are Wikipedia articles. And in fact, if we want to narrow it down, we can click here in namespace choose article and go and it's going to so it tells us here no pages none of, of at least of the kind we just chose no articles li linked to the epistemology of wikipedia articles so that's why this has this article is an orphan no, no, nothing else links to it so um, it's a really good idea uh, Maynard do you want to give us a link to what article you've been working on so we can 
Oh, I see. It's in your sandbox. Okay, so this is something to do. This is you don't want to bring links from other articles into it until you've moved it out of your sandbox into the main Wikipedia page uh, space. Uh, but once you do, then certainly. Uh, so here, okay. So I'm going to click on your draft. So it's Rin. Oh, I think we got an extra plus maybe at the end there. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Rinberry. So I'm going to do a search on Rinberry in the in the search box here, and we see it is a it's a red link. So the the page we see doesn't exist, but we do have various articles that mention Rinberry. So here's one list of vegetarians. If we click on that, and then wait for my browser to catch up. There we go. So I'm going to do find within the page for Rin. And okay, so this one is not a, a great example just because because it's in the references. It's not in the text of the article. And you can do a link from a reference to a Wikipedia biography, but it's not always done. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and see if I can find a different example. Um, oh, it looks like like in this case, I think I think most of these. Uh, examples may come from the references, so um, it's 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 fine to do that, but it's not um, it's not really considered sort of normal to do that on uh, from the references section. It's not it's not or required, I guess. Is lots of references don't actually do that. But once you publish the article out of your sandbox, you might very well go in and find those references. So, uh, so from here, we're looking at this at reference number 33. You would click on the caret next to it, which jumps you to the point in the take text where that particular uh, reference appears. And then we would go to edit that section, find that reference, and uh, just put double brackets around Rinberry's name, and it would link to the Wikipedia article. So let's see, I see some more discussion here. Sarah, you want to bring me up to speed? Um, Maynard is still asking questions about moving when, when, and how to move the article into article space, and how to know what class it should be out of the bat. And in parallel, we are also having a discussion about what are quality references and how to identify right. them if you don't have access to, say, peer-reviewed scholarly journals. So we have two things going on. Okay. So uh, the first question I've covered before, so I'm going to cover that very, very quickly here. Um, if people are still confused about that, feel free to put it on the, the talk page. In this case, again, I'm looking at this, I'm seeing a, a thorough lead section. I'm seeing uh, a number of, oops, I just clicked something by mistake. Um, I'm seeing uh, multiple sections below and lots and lots of references. So. Uh, I think this is very clearly ready to publish on Wikipedia. So I think absolutely go ahead and move it into article space. The way to do that is to go up here and choose move from the uh, the menu. Once you've done that, you choose here where it's currently in user the user namespace. So you're going to choose the article namespace. And you're going to then put in the title that the article should be at. So delete out that part and so it's just Rinberry. You probably want to watch both the original and the uh, and the new article. And if there's been any discussion on the talk page, it's important to move that along. In this case, it probably hasn't. Well, I don't know. There's Maybe there has because I see it's a blue link. So you probably want to keep that checked and then just click move page. You don't need to assess an article to publish it. Um, and self-assessment is not uh, you know, usually people aren't assessing their own articles, as I said before, unless it's just up to start class or something like that. So I wouldn't worry about assessing it with a class. You might want to add it to a wiki project, like wiki project vegetarianism. Um, but you don't, when you do that, uh, you, you can just put the appropriate tag on the talk page and leave out the part about assessment. So another question? I'm I'm not sure, but I think there may be others who would like more clarification on what are high quality references and where to find right. them. 
Right, we, might, we might we might want to do like a, a poll to see if this is in fact of interest to many people, or I'm imagining that. Um, if people want to just go over to the top and click on the green check if yes, and the red X if no, um, we could get a sense of first of all how many people are here. <laughs> <laughs> Second, okay. Whether the uh, general I, issue of what are high quality references is still sort of a lingering question. Yep. Okay, I just actually pulled up really the wrong page. I, I, I made a mistake that would be easy to make. I just typed in WP colon references, uh, and I see this, this page is specifically about how to craft references. So this is actually a pretty technical page about how to, how to format the references. What I meant to do is uh, reliable sources. So this is a guideline, WP colon RS is a shortcut that will take you there. Uh, and so this is the best single... Uh, if you want to look in one pay, uh, place and get a sense of the thinking about what is a worthwhile reference on Wikipedia and what's not, this is your best guide to that. Uh, you'll see this one uh, mentioned in many, many discussions about whether something is a sufficiently reliable source. So it's it's worthwhile to be familiar with it. Uh, I will just summarize the, this page in a nutshell. You'll find that lots of guidelines and policies on Wikipedia have a little box like this uh, that just summarizes what's on the page. So this guideline discusses how to identify reliable sources. The policy on sourcing is Wikipedia verifiability. So that's another worthwhile one to look at. This requires inline citations for any material challenged or likely to be challenged and for all quotations. So it's especially important that uh, that anything that might be controversial have a reference affiliated with it. That someone might read and think, oh, I didn't think it was like that, or I disagree. I think it's you know something else. It's gonna it's gonna vary a lot from one topic to another. Uh, but you know, controversy is uh, is a is, is a bit of a fluid concept. But anytime you are putting something in that you can imagine someone disagreeing with or wanting to know more about, it's a good idea to put some kind of a reference in there. And I would say if you're unsure whether a reference is good enough, go ahead and include it uh, and maybe leave a note on the talk page asking for other people to weigh in about that. Um, the places that tend to be not acceptable as a re reliable source would include things like a personal blog. Um, so uh, if, if, if I have a blog and I say um, Wikipedia is a, a, a really cool site and it's really worth uh, everybody learning something about it, that would not be uh, considered a very high quality source on Wikipedia because I haven't been, I'm not involved with an editor. There's not someone else who agreed with what I had to say and decided that it was worth publishing. So generally speaking, uh, the references you want to include are the ones that come out of some kind of formal process where um, a researcher is submitting it to a journal or a reporter is doing it for a newspaper and someone's making that call apart from the writer that it's, uh, that it's worthy of publication. So, okay, I see. Uh, Guiso has a real example, so I am, I'm waiting for that. Let's take a look. So a blogger in Brazil who's commenting on an old newspaper article that you don't have access to. Yes, okay, excellent. Thank you very much for that example. Um, because, yeah, I, I run into this sort of thing as well. Um, and it's, it's, it's a difficult one. If, if uh, if the blogger has uh, has posted, <laughs> I've booby trapped our guest from earlier. As he Dan's about to trip over my Ethernet cable. <laughs> um, the uh, so if if the blogger has um, has like published an image, if they had a scan of the newspaper article that they pasted into their blog, then that would be I think a reasonable thing. To cite, uh, you'd want to put the um, the the bibliographic info, so the the title of the newspaper article and the reporter who wrote the article. Um, but I think you know, unless there's some reason to think that that blogger is trying to be deceptive, uh, it is pretty much okay. 
um, you know, this is, there's, there's another, um, well, there's an essay, it may be a section in this page. Um, yeah, so, you know, I don't remember exactly where this is in Wikipedia, but there's sort of a principle that exceptional claims require exceptionally high quality sourcing. So, if, if your source is just, um, like if it's someone's, if, 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 if you want to say what someone's birth date was or that they were born in a certain city and, um, and you have a personal blog that says that they were born on a certain date and you can't find it anywhere else, it might be okay to include that. But there might be cases where if, if the person has said that their birthday is one thing to one interviewer at one time and they said it was a different date at another time, and there's been some controversy about whether they were really born on this date or that, or in this country or that country, then that personal blog would not be an acceptable source. Um, you would want to find something from a, a very reputable newspaper or something like that. Um, or you might want to say there has been controversy about this person's birth date. Uh, this one newspaper reported it this way and this other newspaper reported it to another, another way and include both references. So, uh, I, okay, so they do like to scan articles. So yeah, if, um, yeah, if, if you have access to the, the bibliographic information, the, the title, the date it was published, the name of the publication, then uh, I'd say go ahead and include that in the Wikipedia article. And um, if, if, it's, if, if it seems questionable to you, if it does seem like the blogger might be pushing an agenda and not reporting it accurately, then those are the cases where you would want to uh, not include it. Okay. Who's got another question for me? Oh, and let me let me just say generally, so the last couple of weeks as we've been putting the questions in the Etherpad like this, uh, I do try a few days after the class to come back and post the questions to the class page uh, and, I, and, and also the answers as people summarize the answers that come up in class. And I also, sometimes I add my own answers as I'm doing that. Uh, I realize it's a question I didn't get to and if the answer is a quick one, I just put it right in here. So. If, you, if, if we didn't get to your question, uh, always go back and check that. And also, if there's a question I haven't added an answer into that, you're, that is still um, an important question to you, then bring it to the, the talk page. I might not always get to the things that come up in class. Uh, I assume that some of these questions uh, are maybe a little bit ephemeral. They come into your mind and then maybe by the end of the class you're not that worried about it anymore. So I'm not always going to come back and answer every single question. But if I, if I miss something and it is important to you, uh, please put it on the class discussion page. Those ones I try to be much more diligent about getting back to. Even if I don't get to them right away, uh, I do try to come back and, uh, and look at older questions and get to them uh, later on. So I am I'm needing some, some guidance about which one of these next ones to, to come to. I'm, I'm afraid we no longer have broad sweeping themes. Um, okay. in, terms of, in terms of the references, there was still the issue of what's the difference between the, oh yeah, I already looked at that, the difference between the sections and which articles get which sections. So um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit whichever questions you're interested in. Um, okay. Well, let me just, uh, I'm going to just pause and read through them a little bit because I haven't been able to do that while I'm talking. Um, so. Well, anyone who wants to take, why don't we take like a two minute break now and, uh, and I'll come back with something. And feel free to, to pipe up in the chat window if there's something you really want me to get to. And also I, I can address something someone threw out earlier about, um, I can't remember where I saw it, I think it's in this list somewhere. It's about uh, whether there's a deadline for by when one must submit the final project. And yeah. And I can, I can, I can get my opinion of that if you want to read for a minute. Yeah, why don't you jump into that one while I read. Thank you. 
that's possible. It may not be easy for you. Take off your headset. <laughs> Um, I think we would generally encourage you to try to keep up the momentum and try to finish it in the week following the last class. Um, that is not because that's the cutoff date per se. You could come back and finish any time. It's just that based on personal experience, people usually finish, if not by the last week, then within a month. And if not, they tend not to come back and finish. And we've certainly had some exceptions, and we've certainly had some exceptions who are probably retaking the course right now and listening to me, but <laughs> uh, that that's kind of based on what I've seen with people's um, impetus to actually follow through. And if you've already plowed through and feel like you're done, take on another one. I mean, there's no reason not to. Some of you have really surged ahead, and um, there's no reason you should feel held, held back. Yes, and Maynard points out that finished articles attract future editors. And we get to, we, we will of course feature your articles next time we advertise the class, which will happen eventually at some point. So if anyone has anything else administrative while Peter's reading questions, I can answer those things. Otherwise, Pete, do you want to, do you want to dive in? I'll answer the question of why sometimes I say Pete and sometimes I say Peter. Little known facts, which you may have picked up early on in the class, is that is that Peter and I went to college together and we're old friends, in addition to now being colleagues. So the rest of the world has moved on and calls him Pete. But I alone continue to call him Peter. That's a question only I can answer. Okay. Yeah, I, I see one Peter, that I'm going to, to jump into here. Um, so we have number 12. When does an article move from contemporary info, for example, for marketing purposes, to historical info for educative and or community sourced topic of imports to many others in the field and needs contextual info on how the topic has morphed into something else and or impacting a larger topic issue? I love this question. Um, if the, whoever has whoever asked this question, if you uh, if you could put in a link to the specific article, I'd love to look at it. Um, but in in general, the the second one, the historical perspective, that is the thing that Wikipedia aims to cover. So it's it's very uh, common for like a business owner or you know you know one place where this always comes up is uh, like movies if a movie is about to be released there's probably some uh, there's probably somewhere on the web that that's been discussed uh, that it's in the works it's been announced that certain actors are in it it maybe has a, a, a temporary title until it is released and things like that um, so often, I think the uh, like the marketing department of the film will come and put a, a Wikipedia article about it up uh, because they want as many people to be aware of the film as possible, and they want the fans of those actors to know about it so that they all flood into the movie theater when it's released. So technically, something like this uh, is not notable. If it hasn't been covered by independent sources, if it hasn't been covered by independent reliable sources, um, it doesn't meet that notability threshold. So even if it has very famous actors in it, uh, unless it's been the subject of some extensive critical commentary before it has even come out, which is very rare, uh, it, there really shouldn't even be an, a Wikipedia article to begin with. Um, so you, you might find that, that people, uh, that other Wikipedians look for articles like that and uh, nominate them for deletion as they see them. Um, or tag them with things like there are insufficient citations um, and things like that. Now, if in, in that example, if it's, um, let's say the movie now has been released and the article is still up, uh, it may have a lot of marketing language in it because it was written by that film studio. Again, this is not Wiki, that's not compatible with Wikipedia policy. That's not what it, Wikipedia is not, uh, you, you may be familiar with the website IMDB, which is the Internet Movie Database. Um, so the IMDB 
the purpose of it is to give you information about the plot of a movie and the cast of the movie and things like that. Um, but an ideal Wikipedia article about a movie shouldn't necessarily have a thorough rundown of everything that happens in the plot. It should talk about what the independent sources have said about it. So if, if critics have talked about a specific character or a specific element of the plot, that's the kind of stuff that the Wikipedia article should talk about. So any time that, um, anytime that you find yourself looking at that question, the, the, the best general answer to it is aim for what you think people are interested in in a historical context, not for um, sort of the, the current temporary interest in the topic. Um, and that's, and the, the best way to, to usually do that is by looking at the highest quality, most independent sources about that topic and using that as a guide to what should go in the Wikipedia article. Um, I see someone, someone does bring this back to the, the Pixatel article that we used as an example earlier. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing a chuckle from Dan, who's actually still here in the room. <laughs> I don't know if, that's, uh, if that came through the microphone, but he said he's enjoying this part. <laughs> so uh, this, this is, a, this is I, I love that someone is asking this question. This is a, a, a really insightful question. So uh, to come back to this, so this, this particular example is uh, this this software product was bought by another? It, it's gone out of business and it's no longer offered as a product. It was it was bought by another company, and uh, I don't even I don't know exactly. I don't even know if Dan knows what became of it. Um, but this particular product uh, is is no longer something you could download. Um, and actually, you, you do see in this in the info box here. It says Pixatel.com is offline as of 2012. Um, I think that may be something that I added. I don't remember for sure. <laughs> um, so, in in that case, it you know I think Dan was saying earlier that this is is something that might be sort of on that edge of whether it's notable or not. If we scroll down to look at the references section, we do have I think what 11 independent sources. So there were reviews of the product and things like that. So technically, this really does meet the uh, the notability requirements of Wikipedia. It's kind of a weird case because if you think about, um, you know, in, in different, like this is a software product and in the software world, there's lots and lots of coverage. There are lots of websites that will talk about that software. If this was, uh, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head, but, um, you know, if this were a, 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 ni a 19th century uh, author you know, of of some like non-mainstream topic, um, you know, it, it might be that there's enough scholarly research about it to have a Wikipedia article, but that nobody's really gotten around to it, and there probably isn't an article about it yet. So it's Wikipedia sort of has this weird bias towards things that are recent uh, and things that are that are that have a lot of recent coverage. Wait, hang on, Dan. <laughs> I'm passing the microphone. I just I need to add one thing here, and, and the Pixatel um, article is also a tribute to uh, to Pete's understanding of, Pic of of Wikipedia. Period. That's it. Well, thanks for that, Dan. Um, so yeah, so I think I think that this is you know I think this article is okay to stay on Wikipedia. Um, but I do think there's there's a legitimate question of whether like when when we wrote it when uh, when when Dan published it uh, and published his changes to it um, his perspective on what was the sort of lasting importance of this might be different than what someone would look at today and I think it's 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 a very legitimate thing for someone to go in and uh, and update it uh, I think in a case like this there's like who's going to have the interest to actually do that? Maybe no one, right? Dan doesn't have, Dan did it before uh, as part of his work and he, you know, worked hard to uh, mitigate any conflict of interest when he did that, but he's not working for, the, the company doesn't exist anymore. So, um, you know, who, who's going to actually take the time to go through and really carefully rewrite the article to make sure that it's, um, that it's, that it, that it reflects a historic perspective, maybe no one. But at the same time, if we look at how often it's being read, I'm going to click on the View History tab, 
and then on the page view statistics, as we've done before. And, you know, it's Dan might be surprised over here. He's laughing, right? He's thinking it's going to be a low number, but it's actually almost 300 people have looked at it in the last 30 days. It may not be... It may not be people. This also would include things like uh, Google's indexing program. Uh, you know, there are like automated processes on the on on the internet that that click through pages. Um, so this tool does not do anything to distinguish between what's sort of a real live reader looking at an article versus something like that. But um, yeah, it's uh, there might actually be people still looking at it. <laughs> there might be people looking at it because I've brought this up as an example before. Uh, I have this. I, I did an interview that's available online of uh, where I brought this up as an example of how someone should approach uh, an article for about a company they work for. So maybe some people are looking at it from that perspective. You just you never really know exactly why someone's looking. <laughs> So let's see, what else do we have? Um, I think we're getting towards the end of class time here. Got about 10 minutes more. Uh, yeah, I, never, I never know which questions are going to be of most interest to you. Like, I had no idea that the that last one was going to be so exciting. So that's why it's kind of, you kind of need to look through the, through the list, unless they're trends. Yep. Um, so I do see a plus one on, I think, a, a similar question here, number 13. Do companies rely on or expect Facebook versions of Wikipedia articles when hiring Wikipedia writers for marketing purposes? So is the crossover relations between the use of Facebook advertising and the community pages that rely on Wikipedia articles? Okay, so there, this is, there are several <laughs> questions wrapped up here. Um, number one is uh, the, the very idea of hiring Wikipedia writers for marketing purposes. Uh, this is highly controversial. I, it's, it's certainly something that is done uh, frequently. Um, I, I, I think that anyone who works extensively on Wikipedia uh, would say that this is not an ethical thing to do. Um, the, the, the way, of course, this is kind of similar to what we just talked about with the picture tell example. Um, so if, if, if you're interested in how I would characterize those ethical lines, I would say look at my, this is my website, this is my business website, Wiki Strategies is my business. And I've put several pages on here uh, about that topic. So ethical editing is really the main one that you might want to look at. And um, the important things I think are number one to understand the purpose of Wikipedia. So to read through the, the, the policy pages and the, the things that we've looked at in this course. Uh, and I think most importantly is to clearly disclose on the article's talk page uh, that you work for the company and actively seek out feedback from other people. So not like if you work for, so the Pixatel again is a good example. It could very well be with Pixatel that not too many people are looking at that page. So if Dan came in and nobody was paying attention, uh, he should go to something like Wiki Project Software and say, hey, I work for this company. I um, I, I'm doing some updates to the article and I want some feedback and I, I want to make sure that people feel that this is neutral. So a lot of the, uh, there, there are lots of people out there who offer Wikipedia writing services and don't do these things and uh, I believe and I think most Wikipedians very much agree that that is not an ethical thing to do and we try to uh, we try to counteract that when we find it. Sometimes it's kind of obvious when you're looking at an article. And um, personally, when I find something like that, the first thing I'll try to do is ask someone, do you work for this company? Uh, I try to, you know, I try to do that in a non-confrontational way. Uh, if they just didn't think to, to state it, that's not necessarily uh, the most horrible thing as long as they actually do when asked. Uh, and then I try to um, initiate some discussion around uh, you know, usually the reason that I noticed is because they're using some marketing language or they're including things that are not well sourced. And uh, so I'll initiate some discussion about, well, I think this section should be deleted or this reference is not something that we should include. Um, you're, so the other part of the question was about Facebook's community pages. Um, so for those that don't know, uh, which probably most of you, uh, it's, I don't know, it's the most well-known thing, Facebook, 
uh, has has pages that it pulls directly from Wikipedia. Um, so if you look at if you're looking at Facebook and you do a search for Pixatel, maybe uh, it might come up with the actual text of the Wikipedia article uh, that that Dan and other people wrote. Um, this is entirely acceptable, happy behavior from, from Facebook um, because they do comply with the license that everyone that works on Wikipedia has agreed to release their work under. It's because they, um, you know what, I'm going to, so I don't, Facebook is a little complicated for me to go to right now, but I'm going to pull up a, a Google page because they do a similar thing. So let's say um, uh, NASA type in something kind of random here. And on the right hand side, oh let's see, I'm not sharing my screen, am I? Let me take care of that. Oh, I sometimes get lost in Windows here, so please bear with me. We oh, always see sharing. what you've been okay. reading. Okay, good, good. Um, so on the right hand side here you see this paragraph here. Uh, the Na National Aeronautics and Space Administration is an agency of the United States government, etc. So this is something directly quoted from Wikipedia. Um, it's under copyright because Wikipedia contributors do have copyright to what they contribute. That, that copyright is not owned by Wikipedia, it's owned by the people who wrote the material. Uh, but because they've agreed to Wikipedia's terms of service, they've agreed to relinquish that copyright under certain conditions. And those conditions are that you are credited for your work and that you uh, and and that any republishing is also available under the same license. So in this case, they have credited people for that work. It's the text saying it's from Wikipedia is not actually sufficient credit. Some some pages, some publications do that. That's actually not enough. But Google and Facebook have a link there. And if you click on the link, it takes you to that Wikipedia article. And then you can click on the view history. And there you go. All of the people who contributed to the article are listed there. All of the authors are listed there. It's not necessarily a, um, a very readable <laughs> version of that authorship for most people, but it does technically legally comply with that, um, with that requirement. So Randolph, I see you're saying this, this is the kind of stuff that faculty always ask when they find out I explore publishing on Wikipedia. Ethical issues are crucial. So uh, yes, I, I can only agree with this. And uh, this is always something I'm happy to talk about. It's, it, it, it does, it starts to get a little bit outside the bounds of what we're doing in this course. So, uh, you know, feel free to leave something on the course talk page and maybe we can, you know, take it to email if it, if it gets too far afield. But uh, personally and professionally, this is, uh, this is something very much of interest to me. And let's see, I think we are really getting right up on the end of our hour. We've got about five minutes left. Um, Sarah, is there anything that you especially want me to cover before we go. I'm going to do a quick scan through. Uh, I see someone asked me we have more than one article as a project. Absolutely. Um, that's, yeah. uh, I, I would really encourage you to and, and feel free to list multiple articles on the, the course page if you like. It, it appears at first that you cannot list more than one, but you can list more than one. So whoever is having trouble with that, have another look. At least I can list more than one. I just tested it. Yeah, I think I think the issue there is that you can't you can't type in more than one all at the same time. But once you have entered one, if you go back to the page, you'll see that there's a place to enter another. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I'm gonna just double check that. So here it's, I am. It's on true our... of my my account. I I I know yeah. sometimes other people see different things than I see, but yeah. I can enter more than one. Okay, so Maynard, looks like you're the one who's having the difficulty, so let's find. So here is your line. And so, okay, so it's going to look different for me than for you. I'm going to look at my line first. So I put in Epistemology of Wikipedia, 
before, and now that I've done that, I have another line that says add an article below it. So I should be able to type in something else, like NASA, and click add article. So I guess for some reason that's not working for you, Maynard, and I don't know why. So you see, now that I did that, it shows up, and, and then I can even add another article. I just have to do them one by one. Um, I, yeah, I don't have a quick answer for you. Uh, it's also not, feel free to just, uh, yeah, just, so, so feel free to just put on the course talk page, um, just put a link to, you, you might leave a comment and say these are the several articles that I'm working on. You only need to have one article to submit for the badge. So um, while we are very much interested in seeing all the articles that you're working on, uh, if it's not showing up in this interface, it's not really the end of the world. So why don't you start off by, with that, just put them in the, um, in the talk page. I also might be able to add them for you. Uh, when I'm logged in from my regular account, I can add articles to other people's pages, so maybe I can just take care of it for you. <laughs> Maynard, really? You really want the badge? I had no idea. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you've been you've been uh, you've been so active. I, I am not at all surprised. <laughs> uh, and really good work. I, I I can't say enough about the 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 excellent work that so many students have been doing in this round of the course. I think we're seeing a lot more activity than we have in the past. And uh, so congratulations to all of you that have been keeping up with us. It's it's great. <laughs> Dan just said the teacher is cheering up, uh, and I have no I have no comment on that. <laughs> okay, so I think we're at the end of the hour, or the end of the uh, much more than an hour. So we will see you online, and we will see you next week. Thank you all so much. Hi, everybody, and remember, during the week, feel free to post your questions on the talk page. We are answering them in real life. We really are. So. And I, I'm going to... I'm going to pass the microphone over to Dan so he can say goodbye as well. Hi, your questions were really amazing. That was a lot of fun to sit in on. So uh, anyway, thanks for having me, and um, have a great rest of your lives. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, everyone. We'll see you soon.